Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk. Um, today, this is just a quick, quick little video. Um, I've just been having a play with this. What we've got here is one of them little um, Chinese um, kit radios. Um, and this was actually built by one of my viewers. And he asked me whether I could... Uh, he put it together. He's he Actually, he's done a really, really nice job on uh, putting it together. Actually soldering it together and everything. And he's got all the parts in all the right places and everything. But he could only get it to pick up a couple of, um, a few stations with a lot of howling and motorboating. And the, th the thing is, he didn't have any way of um, actually aligning it, any alignment equipment. And uh, that's what this is behind um, behind it there. What we've got here is an advanced um, Type 62 um, frequency generator. And what this can do is, uh, this can output various uh, frequencies, um, so you can set various different frequencies on it. And uh, what this allows you to do is actually set the intermediate frequency on the radio correctly. And um, basically align the radio. And a um, bit of an issue that, uh, as with everything uh, that comes from China, I mean, these Kits really are a lot of fun. Um, so much fun I have actually. Not the same one, uh, but I have actually got one myself here to put together. And I've actually got another one on, <laughs> on the way from China, so uh, yeah. Uh, they are quite interesting little, um, little projects these. But all the instructions that come with it are, uh, are actually in Chinese. And um, I have basically translated that and what it doesn't give you the information it doesn't give you is what the actual um, intermediate frequency for this little radio should be uh, so basically we've ended up guessing um, being that most of these cheap little Chinese radios use a um, intermediate frequency of um, 465 uh, megahertz oh excuse me so uh, we thought well if all the rest use that then Excuse me. This probably uses it as well. So that's what I've done. I've aligned this to um, 465 kilohertz, and actually, it seems to have worked quite well. I'll um, just play it, and then um, we'll go into a bit about how you do the alignment and what have you. But if I switch it on now, I will say that the <laughs> these are cheap Chinese, and um, the guy built it. Uh, it worked, and literally within a day, the um, switch on the volume control had failed. So it does have a little additional switch added to the top there, which actually doesn't look bad at all on, especially with the little on-off decal he's added for it. It doesn't look out of place. So we'll switch on. Oh. We'll turn it down a bit. This time, closing is open, and tickets. But we can. Turn it off a bit. Let's We've got rid of all the motorboating and everything. There isn't a lot actually to pick up around here. I'm not in a good AM uh, reception area, but... Yeah, thank you. It picks up quite nicely now. Plenty of, we know how hard you work for your business. Plenty of stations far around here. Like I said, there's no motorboat boys in or anything there. Just to prove, like I said, this area is not good for reception. I've got one of my little, um, my basically I collect small transistor radios. I have quite a collection of them. Um, we've got a little signal here. This is a little um, Russian radio from the 1960s. And actually, they're quite a nice performer, these. Um, they're a little radio alarm clock with actual, basically it's like a little watch movement built into them. Sadly, I've got two of these and neither of them, um, the watch movement work anymore. But um, the radio works really nicely. I'll switch this one and I'll just show you. Basically, we'll try tuning it on in here. That's basically it. I mean, we might pick up like 
one or two more stations on it and it is sensitive this one but not that many more really than this little uh, this little cheap Chinese jobby let's go back on again that's all no, I've switched it off with the You just can't pick that station up right at the bottom that we could be on the uh, it's trying, but it just can't quite, just can't quite get it. Just have to look forward to the next Everything else it picks up nicely. Home of the year. I'll switch that off before we got hit with a um, copyright strike. So yeah, I'll basically I'll go through what you actually do to align one of these things. What we've got, we'll switch the signal generator on. We're not actually going to try and align this because I've had the generator switched off for a while now, and you actually have to let these warm up. Um, they, I mean, this thing's from the um, early 1960s. I think these were made in about six, 1962, about 1961-62. Um, and to actually use this properly you need to allow it to warm up for about 40 minutes an hour and stabilize so if I was to try and actually align this radio with it now um, it would drift and you wouldn't get a really good um, alignment on it but um, we'll just do a quick thing and you can get an idea of what you actually do all we've got is we've got the um, signal generator and there's various ways of coupling a signal generator actually up to the radio, but the way that I prefer doing it, especially with these um, little transistor radios, is I just have that, which is basically just, uh, well that's an empty um, solder reel, which I've, wire I've basically wrapped with wire, so I've created a coil. And that's all I use to transmit the um, signal, the frequency signal, um, from my signal generator over to whichever radio we're uh, working on. That should have warmed up enough for us to um, do an initial test anyway. It's actually set quite hot at the moment but if I switch the radio on I'll just take it off firm station to make this a bit easier but if I I'll take the back off and we put that over the coil So I lost a wire. Yeah. There we go. Now if you can, I don't know if you can hear that pitch tone there. Oh, we're on frequency. Yeah, it's not actually quite right because obviously this isn't quite uh, warmed up yet. But basically, you can hear that tone, and it's a case. If you've got these IF cam, oh, let me zoom you in and you can see. So I'm not going to um, adjust them because they are, I have adjusted them all up. But basically we've got the four IF cams on this, it's got a two stage IF um, in it, intermediate frequency. Um, so basically it has two little stages of amplification um, there. Um, we ignore the red trimmer which is the one at the top there because um, that's nothing to do with the IF. We have a yellow, a white and in this case a green. Sometimes you get a yellow, a white, a black and a green. But basically yellow, white and green. We start with the yellow and we peak that up. Um, I prefer to use something non-metallic so um, it's actually this one needs to be an old knitting needle which I've uh, modified but uh, I've got a non-ferrous or a non-metallic alignment tool and basically it's a case of going in there and tweaking up for the loudest output you can get and basically you go you tweak one each at a time 
what I then like to do is just drop the um, output from the frequency from the um, signal generator, then just go around them again and really peak it up as high as you can to get the loudest output possible from the um, frequency generator. Just switch that off as you can see here as I um, switch the frequency generator off. It went silent. I'll switch that off there. So yeah. It is a nice. What's it? I don't know where I'd recommend this one or the one that I've got to build yet. Because I've I've never actually come across these for sale. Um, these you can get on eBay. They're about three pound fifty. Uh, but what I like about this is the whole radio runs off one um, one point five volt D cell, which I thought was quite cool. But yeah, um, like I said, that was just a quick quick video on. Um, that little cheap Chinese, that cheap Chinese radio. So more for uh, my viewer who sent it me to uh, see if I could align it for him. It's not bad at all. What I will say with them. What I will say with these um, cheap radios, them IF cans are really, 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 really cheap quality. I wouldn't like to try keep um, aligning this thing because I'm pretty sure that them um, little IF cores are going to break up. I mean, I'm using, um, I'm not using screwdriver or anything. I'm using a plastic alignment tool, and even with that, um, they don't give me a great deal of confidence. I mean, these things are cheap, but. Yeah, they're good for the price. They are very, very good for the price. But those, um, I said, those IF cans are probably about as cheap as you could possibly, possibly uh, make them. Um, they won't take up to a lot of abuse. Uh, they will start, like I said, the I struggle. In fact, that green one at the bottom there, I've already struggled, struggled with that one. Have it slip a few times. I mean, I've managed to get it, but. Uh, they aren't they aren't brilliant um they aren't brilliant build quality but for for like what they cost I think they're absolutely fantastic little things to play with. Said so your only main disadvantage with them is the fact that uh, the instruction sheet you get and you can work it out, it's not impossible to work it out. Um, so the first one of these I saw done online was um, Shango 066 built um, that one and a few variants. Yeah, I haven't seen him do this um, particular one, but he pointed out how you can work out most of the um, most of the things, or you can get a, um, a Chinese translator for your phone that you basically just hold over um, the characters you want to see what it says, and it'll translate it for you. But uh, yeah, I'd say it was just a, a quick little video um, on that, so I'll be um, sending this back to its. Um, I'll be sending this back to this or to its owner in the next day or two, and um, hopefully, um, hopefully he'll uh, have a play with some more because he did say he was going to be um, possibly getting a couple more to um, play with. But um, yeah, like I said, nice, um, nice little toy, nice little project, and um, they're nice and cheap. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. Like I said it was just a quick little video, just to um, say that I, I have managed to align it. Like I said, uh, it will bring in a lot more stations than it is bringing in here. Where I live is notoriously bad for um, AM reception, as you can. That's why I uh, brought my little, uh, my little signal out to show you. Like I said, that I have that on my boat. I can bring out. All kinds of stations. I bring it here, and it only brings probably like one station, two stations in more than um, that can. Right, I'm going to leave it there for now. Actually, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye.